All right, so in this video, we are going to install the YubiKey Manager GUI. Even though it has reached its end of life, we're still going to install it uh, because it, it still is useful to us. You can still use it even after its end of life. It's just no longer going to receive updates. Uh, so there is still there is still some use that we can get out of it. And if nothing else, uh, we can use it to segue back into using the CLI. So we're going to head over to uh, ubico.com. There are some people that are going to struggle to do some of these things from the command line. So I, I want to I want to at least show you guys how you can get the GUI up and running. So we're going to head over to support and click on downloads. We're going to click on downloads for YubiKey Manager. And that takes us to this page. So this is the page where you can download the YubiKey Manager GUI. Once again, on this page, they have announced the end of life for the YubiKey Manager GUI, which is on February 19th of 2026. That is when it reaches its end of life. That simply means that the, the GUI will no longer receive updates. It will still be available somewhere, probably still on this page, but it's not going to get updates anymore. Uh, the, and the, what they are trying to do is encourage people to switch over to the CLI. So we are using Linux. I'm going to click on the app image download. I'm going to CD inside of my downloads directory. If I do an ls dash l on YubiKey Manager, etc. and so forth dot app image there it is uh, we can get a hash of that I'll do the SHA 256 sum command line hashing algorithm I'm gonna run that on the app image always a good thing to do we can then compare that hash to uh, known hashes available to us on uh, their website and verify the authenticity of that. So if I try to run the uh, YubiKey Manager, it's not even going to let me type it out because it doesn't have the proper permissions. So first we're going to do chmod plus x on the app image. Now if I rerun that ls-l command, you now see that we have the execute permission bit enabled to allow us to execute the executable program, however you refer to that, app image. And it shows up in green, which is another indication that uh, it's, it is now executable for us. So we're going to do dot forward slash followed by the name of the app image. And we get this error. It says error loading libfuse.so.2. So this is a, a shared library that this app image, as well as other app images on Linux, uh, depend on in order to be able to function. So it does say that we might still be able to extract the contents of this. We could run it with dash dash app image dash extract, but I don't want to do that. Uh, so this does require Fuse to run, and that's basically what uh, this is dealing with. And now there actually is a GitHub page that they uh, provide for more information, and we're, we're going to go to this GitHub page because it, it does have some very useful information on it that we're going to need. All right, so app images require Fuse version 2 to run. Uh, Fuse stands for File System in User Space. It's a system that lets non-root users mount file systems. Now, the important thing to understand about this is that the package that you need to install is going to vary depending on which version of Ubuntu that you are using. 
we go back to the command line and I cat out the contents of the Etsy OS release file. I'm using Ubuntu version 24.04.2. If I go back to that GitHub page, we have instructions for 21, 22.04, and finally 24.04, which is the version that I am using. So the package that we need to install is libfuse 2t64 and the command to install it is right here and if it's not showing up in your repository then you you can run this command to add the universe repository to your ubuntu system so i'm going to copy that command we received this error for this library now instinctively you might try to do a search so if I do an apt search for that um, that particular shared library I don't get anything back so that's where there could be some confusion but the github page has guided us in the right direction so we now know that we actually need to install libfuse 2t64. All right, that has completed. Now let's attempt to rerun the YubiKey Manager GUI again. And this time it starts up. So my YubiKey is plugged in. Uh, so we immediately get information back in the GUI for that particular YubiKey. It's a YubiKey. Series 5 with NFC, here's the firmware version, and we have the serial number. Uh, we're already in home, and we have applications and interfaces. So if I click on interfaces, in a previous video, uh, we did some configuration of this from the command line. I disabled every application over the NFC transport, and then I went back and I re-enabled just one we did all of that from the command line, and you see that reflected in in this um, in the, in the page here for the interfaces. So we could obviously uh, do the same thing here. We could interact with these, enable all, disable all, etc., and so forth. And then we have applications. If we click on that, a drop down appears. We have OTP. Uh, FIDO2 and PIV. So if we click on OTP, the YubiKey has uh, two slots. One is already configured by default, and then slot two is currently empty. We can also swap these out if we want. We can swap slot one with slot two. Uh, we have FIDO2. So if we were to use the GUI to set a pin, pretty straightforward, we're just gonna click on that. We're gonna set a pin, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna confirm that. And set pin. And finally we have PIV and we will uh, look at this at a later point in the series. All right, so that's gonna conclude this video, but don't worry because I'm working on several additional videos. I have created a series called Fresh Nose YubiKeys. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series. If you have not done so already, please stop what you are doing, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment, and as always, keep learning and stay fresh. See you in the next video.